Well, hello and welcome back to the shop or the garage. Today we're going to be working on a blown rear shock. So this shock, believe it or not, is 12 years old and I never serviced it because I usually ride my road bike up there. I don't ride the mountain bike too often, so it, you know, it doesn't have too many miles on it, so I kind of, I guess I neglected it and, and this is what happens. So we're going to find out what happens if you never service your shock and see what's going on. So I was riding it the other day and you can still see some oil coming out there. Uh, it kind of blew on me and it was foaming and you see air bubbles coming out here. So clearly it blew. Uh, the interesting thing is it's not the positive air pressure chamber because it still supports my weight, but I believe it's the seal between the little mini negative air pressure chamber in here. So we're going to take it apart and see what happens if you never service your rear shock. Okay, so I got the shock out, as you can see. This is a Fox Float RP23. Got it for, like I said, 12 years and never serviced it. So here's its chance to get a nice service and a brand new seal kit. So got the seal kit from Fox. Here's the kit I got. This is the generic, not generic, but the Fox specific rear shock build. Oh, there's the part number right there 803 -00142. And it comes with a whole bunch of stuff. It's, like I said, it's kind of a universal thing, so it'll fix all of the shocks. Not just this one, but most of the ones that they make. So it's got extra stuff that I might not use, but that's okay. It's got the backer rings, which I know I need, and a bunch of O-rings. So let's pop this guy open and see what is broken. By the way, there's a lot better videos on the Fox, actual Fox site and all throughout the internet where... You can do a rebuild super fast with all the right tools, but I'm just doing it because I want to see what's going on, what fails when you don't service it. Clearly it's one of the seals, and it's the negative one because it's pushing down still. So I have this on there to hopefully catch the this when it pops off. So let's open it up and see which seal needs to be replaced. All right, there we go. Got more oil in here than I thought there would be. One of these seals is broken. It's not obvious which one it is. So, we'll just replace them all and put it back together. So here's the inside. We got seal set up here on top of the piston and then there's another seal set inside the bottom in there you can see the backer rings are white and the seal is the black one in the center so in the kit there is replacements of each of those so I'm gonna go ahead and swap those out okay so I've done a bit of dissecting here and taking the shock apart taking the old seals out and I think I've discovered the problem, and that is that the old seal, so here's the smaller seal, this one goes in the can here, the bigger one is the one on the piston. If you look at the cross section, it's old versus new, it's going to be impossible to tell on the, on the camera here, but, so I'll throw up a little diagram here, but the old seal 
is just totally worn down, whereas the new one has some nice seal edges to it. I think that was just the problem. It's just 12 years of wear and tear wears down the seals enough where it leaked by and the shock wasn't working anymore. So that's hopefully the case. I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together and we'll see if that was the issue. So here's the parts we're replacing in the kit here. we got the smaller seal set which goes in the can. Bigger seal set goes on the piston. But then the little diameter o-ring goes up inside of here. And then this is a dust wiper that goes in the end of the can there. And of course some new Fox fluid to lubricate everything up. There's all the old stuff over here and then there's a couple extra parts. Like I said, it's a universal kit so there's some extra parts depending on the size of the can and whatnot. So let me get all this put back together and hopefully that will be what was the problem and we can go right again. So I've got it that far put back together and actually it wasn't too bad putting the seals back in. Pretty straightforward. Again, look at the official Fox videos if you want to do that because it took me about half an hour and it should take them about one minute. But anyways, I'm having trouble pressing it and tightening it at the same time. So I'm going to do a little trick that I saw. I'm actually going to install it back on the bike. Use the leverage of the bike to compress it. Then I can more easily, hopefully, put it back on and it won't be all set. So get it reinstalled then I can squish it down and then hopefully be able to tighten it back up. Okay, now I've got the shock put on, I have all this leverage, I can easily compress the shock and then tighten it back up. So just put in the rest of the float fluid on the inside there, so just to dump some in there, keep it all lubricated over the years, and then we'll compress it, tighten it up, and that should be it. So let's see how it goes. Alright, and that's it. It just goes hand tight like that. And we are all done. Except sweet. Except I forgot to put my travel indicator on, so that stinks. I have to take this axle out and put my travel indicator out back on. But first I'm gonna pump up a little air in it and see if it is working like it should. So far, it feels pretty good. Well, there you go. We got the shock put back together, seals replaced, and everything is good to go. So that's what happens if you don't replace your seals over time and maintain them. They will wear out and you'll get some leakage. So hope you learned a little bit about taking the old shock apart and about how the seals wear down over time. Easy service you can do yourself just with a simple kit. Replace the seals and you're back in action. Um, and that way you can keep riding. So go ahead and keep your stuff maintained and get out there and enjoy your ride. Thanks for watching. Till next time.